Yehovah Malak Olam Olamad Yehovah Malak Yami Rakes Yehovah Gadol Makarian Tios Yehovah Adonai Yehovah Elohim Kurios Tios Panta Kreta Kurios Tios Pistos Elda at Yehovah El Emuna Yehova E Basilian Kurios Otios O Pantacreta Basilios Basilion Kai Kurios Kurion Derek Emuna Bakar Mishpat Shava The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elion Elohim is always alive and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness. Our training in righteousness. That the man of Lord God might be mature. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkanu to the highest. And peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. And great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath. In the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Dear brethren, one more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Using the privacy of our priesthood in confession of our sins through rebound. And understanding the very purpose of every day being kept alive in the work of Lord God. Which is to become holy ones of that holy Lord God. As Leviticus chapter 11 Verse 45, as many people may quote saying that he is holy, even we ought to be holy. But the word over here it says, for us in the Hebrew, that to be of for you Elohim, that's what he says in 1145, that I, Jehovah, the one bringing up you from the land of Egypt. The land of Egypt is nothing but again, the world and cosmos thinking so here we find the passage which teaches to us he brought us out of the land of this egypt so that he can become for us or to to be of for you to elohim that is to become for you god and you become holy ones that's a very clear distinction for us the same passage is when we read from Deuteronomy 32 verses 13 and 14. We truly understand how far above that these people, they were been fed. In the English, we don't find this essence, but in the Hebrew, we have a lot of meaning for us to learn from there. And here in the passages, particularly in Deuteronomy chapter 32, the Hebrew goes on to teach for us the way how he has took them the way how he has made them to be. And here, as we find the word for us in Deuteronomy 32 in verse 13 in the Hebrew, as I'm reading it from interlinear, it says for us, He is making ride him on high places of, high places of, twice he uses the word. And here we look in English, he made him ride on the high places of the earth. But over here we look, he is making ride him on high places of, high places of, 
Bimuthi and Bimthi, only one alphabet being changed between the both. And he says, high places of high places of the land. And the reason why we read this is because we have called to be the children of the Most High Lord God. We cannot be any longer still like the strangers and pilgrims who are aliens to the plan of God and to the will of God. Earlier we were in that manner, but now coming close unto Christ, through, through Christ to God the Father, it is what we have been kept to become the holy ones of that holy one. And that's what we read in Leviticus 11 again. I have called you or are bringing you up out of the land of the Egypt so that you should become, I should become for you, Yehovah, Elohim, and you become holy ones, that holy I, that is, I am holy. You become holy ones. And the entire Christianity program is nothing but renovating the standards of our thinking. If we don't renovate our standards of our thinking, then we are not becoming what God the Father has intended us to be on this earth alive. We would just walk aliens. In Galatians chapter 5, when we read the fruit of the Spirit, it has been divided into three parts, one towards self, towards others, and towards God. Every three, three, three. That is what C.S. Cofield writes in his Bible. He mentions three. The first three to self, the second three towards other, and the third three towards God. He mentions them very clearly. The original Schofield, not the revised. So comparing these three standards in our life, we would learn either man being alive on this earth First of all, he should be useful to God because he is called to be witness in this angelic conflict. If he is not being useful to God, at least he has to be useful to the fellow man. In fact, if he is not even being useful to the fellow man, he has to at least renovate his own life first from the standards of the descended parts, what he says in Isaiah 57. How have you fallen into the deepest descendant parts of the hell? Because God the Father wants everyone to be in a very pure heart. The reason why they haven't become to be of a pure heart, but rather they have become descended like the lower parts of the hell, is because they haven't realized Yehovah Elohim, our Lord, our God, is Lord God for us so that we could become holy ones to others. Holy ones representing Christ. Holy ones being called as saint in the church age. The logic is very simple. And to teach you in very simple example, the medicine has been prepared to work inside. Until and unless you consume it, it cannot work in you. The very simple procedure with Bible doctrine as well. The word of Lord God, if it is in the Bible and if you haven't taken in the proper categorization in your human spirit to fill in the facets of your soul, to learn with proper exegesis, isagogics and categories as Apostle Paul teaches to us beginning with Ephesians 2.20 and ending up in Ephesians 4.1, the entire chapter number 3. When he reasons with Ephesians 2.12, he goes on to teach for us, you cannot be without Christ, you cannot be without God, you cannot be without hope in this world. You have to be so, earlier you were such. But now in Christ Jesus we have been made one with Lord God, therefore do not be like aliens or pilgrims or strangers on this earth, but rather be the royal family of God being constructed upon the teachings of apostles and the prophets, and you have been fitly joined together to build upon the Naon temple, the Shekinah glory, the indwelling holy of the holies in you. And therefore he says in, one, in chapter 3 in verse 1, For this cause, and he writes to teach to us the importance of the church,
the importance of the manifold wisdom of God, the importance of the length, the breadth, the height, and the depth, what we have to every day communicate to you because of the great pample ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which has been given in John 20, 21 to understand. If Christ, our Lord, our God, was been apostello, being sent by God the Father, we, though be not needed, how to illustrate this? If the two bricks which have been sealed together, yet to enter into between those two bricks by force or by some external force of agent, you have been sent there so that you could fill the gap between the two bricks and make them to be one joining process. And that's why the pastor teacher is between God the Father and the church. They have been pampered, they have been inserted by force. Because if not, we read that in Second Chronicles 7 2, the priest couldn't enter because the glory of Lord God filled the temple. 1 John 2 20 and 27, for as we read, every believer has received the sanction and the anointing. There is no one that could be there for them to teach. But if every believer would wake up to understand that their body, their life, their purpose with Christ, the relationship with Lord God, there is no need for us to remind them that you have to be a saint, you have to be a little one, you have to be like the Holy One, you have to become like the Holy One. There is no need for us to tell you that you should join as disciple and grow up as grammatias, but rather your conscience would say, let's taste and see the Word of God. Let's taste and see the mind of Christ. Let's enjoy this medicine to work in us so that we could produce in us to become the Holy Ones. That would automatically come to your mind. But since you haven't filled yourself in the glory of God, the pampo ministry of the pastor teacher has been still alive. And for that cause he writes in Ephesians 3, what is the purpose of the church? Right now we listen and learn the things that have been given for us on this earth. Deuteronomy 29, 29. The things what we have in the heaven, there are some more things for us to learn. That is also Deuteronomy 29, 29. The same thing in Ephesians 3, 8 through 11. Right now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God has to be manifested and the angels are rubbernecking to look. He says in 1 Peter 1, 12. Therefore, he says for us in Leviticus 11, I have become Elohim for you, bringing you out. It is I alone who brought you out. There could be no other person who could give you out apart from my Christ. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, as well as in Deuteronomy 32, 12, we find it is he alone. Again, for us in Proverbs chapter 20, 1 verse number 30, again there also we read, there is no counsel, no wisdom, no knowledge against this great Lord. And the word over here against, the word for us in the Hebrew is paket. And that meant to say there is no exposition or no explanation, no prediction, no other thing that could be praiseworthy apart from the great work of Lord God, what he has given for us in his complete, coherent canon of scripture, 66 books for us. So he says over here, it is I alone who brought you out from the land. Again, the word over here is Aretes. When Pharaoh said to Moses, worship God in your own land. We were reading that in Exodus 8, verses 25 and following. The word, the land over there is the inner man. You cannot have for you still reigning in your old sin nature, the power of this old sin nature and to serve Christ with your lips. You cannot. So God the Father says in 11.45 of Leviticus, it is the one who have brought you out from the land, from the inner man, from the procedure of these Egyptian standards of thinking. What is Egyptian? That is nothing but double straits. Confusion. That is Babylon. But over here, double straits. What did it meant to say? That always the world has two ways to pass out. That is rationalism and empiricism. They don't take the responsibility for it. They just pass it down on the others as they pass by the path, say. That's why double straights, always double. Because they don't know what is the fate. They don't know what is life after that. Though Christ, our Lord, our God, could come and explain to them that it is I who have been resurrected, ascended, and said, and ascended, and session. It is I who have come from the heaven. The people don't want to believe that. They want to believe their myths. That's why they always love to look upon an easy way to escape so that they could be far away from their burdens, so that they could be far away from the reality.
So double straight, Satan always blinds them. He says in Second Corinthians 4, 4, the only solution for it, for us is it, Romans 12, 1, 2, and 3. And that is nothing but for us to renovate the standards of our thinking according to the great and unique mind of Christ. Therefore, he says, for us, I have brought you out from the land of Egypt. What for? So that I could be for you Elohim. There is no other God for us apart from my Jehovah. Therefore, he says, I dwell in the most high place, holy of the holies. Even I also dwell with them who are contrite in heart and humble in spirit. That's what we need to look in Isaiah 57 again. God the Father resides on two parts. Number one in the heaven. And number two with them who are humble enough and the one who are contrite enough. We shall continue that after this prayer. Use the privacy of your priesthood in learning the word of God through rebound. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the pale wonders of this great and unique word of Lord God, which has been prepared and kept for us on today's day in eternity past. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again coming into the grace to learn thy word, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, would enlighten and challenge us by this message that are prepared and kept for us on today's day to nature to past. In Christ, matchless, pure, gracious name we pray, Father. Amen. In Isaiah chapter 57, it will be a great pain for us to look whether we are qualifying for these verses or not, because there are many people today who run about to talk, God is in me, God is doing this, God is doing that, and all other things. And they are in the standards of this world, wherewith they are not able to understand what the word of Lord God clearly teaches to us when we are not still humble and contrite in the work of the Lord. So here we find for us when he teaches that particularly in Isaiah chapter 57, the way how the failure of the pastor teachers in the past led them to do this work and the way how these people, they went along doing the work of great standards of debauchery or the standards of this useless and worthless things. So in Isaiah 57, 15, he says, Thus said the high and the lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place with him, again, that is contrite and humble spirit. The word contrite is daka, and the word meant to say, as who have broken down into the standards of powder or dust. That is what we ask you, the every facet of your cell. It has to be examined by the word of God to really look or have you been totally crushed down by the word of God so that you don't have any way even a minute significance about the standards of this world? The cosmos thinking depends upon the way how they derive their rationalism and empiricism and they allow to have those reasons according to those standards, but we are not so. Though there may be thousand or ten thousand against you, when we please God the Father, we read that in Psalms 14 verse 13. He is going to deliver us and our enemies will be confounded to shame. And the word for us in the Psalms of that Hebrew chapter is very, very unique and very great. Confounding, confusion, dissolution, they are. He says, they will be wasted like that because I pleased Jehovah and there is no counsel that could stand against us. There could be none who could stand against us. As it was in the days of Samuel, as it was in the days of King David in Second Samuel, when he records, "All that is within your heart, you go to do it, because Jehovah is with you." And there we find he gave an occasion which the thing did not please Jehovah. He writes in First Chronicles chapter fifteen, the thing what he did in the case of Uriah the Hittite killing the innocent blood. Apart from that, he was a man after Lord God's own heart. But he gave an occasion to the enemy. The same thing for us as well, even we have to be alert. 
not to give an occasion to the enemies of God to blaspheme our Lord, but we have to be what? The servants, servants, servants. That was a great qualification for David to be called that he is a servant of Jehovah because he was being said in Second Chronicles 7, 4, my servant, David. And the word of Lord God came to Nathan to speak unto him and he said, tell these things to my servant, David. What a great procedure it is for us to be servants to the Lord. The servants of the Lord will be always contrite. They have broken their heart into powder and they have made their heart to be crushed. Therefore he prays, Father, see if there is an offense away in me, lead me in the way of everlasting. Search me diligently, O Lord. Today we are not having that prayer for us. Because you are not becoming holy by taking in the word of God, being built upon the foundation of apostles and prophets. The teachings, the renovations, you are not making that medicine to enter in you and work for you. It is as good as food that has been served on the tables. Till if you could eat that food, it doesn't work in you. So it is. These words, they do not enter into you. They do not work in you. And what do they produce? When there is no working of the word of God, you cannot become contrite. You cannot become the Holy One what He intended, though He has delivered you out from the Egyptian standards of double straits of thinking in this world. Doctrine is very clear. Though the heaven and the earth will vanish off, His word abideth forever. How do that word enter into you? He says, by unfolding the word of truth. In Psalms 119 in 130, The entrance of the word giveth me light that doesn't have any English meaning at all. But in the Hebrew, it's so great and so unique. It says, unfolding. How do you unfold the word of God? You need to unfold the word of God only with exegesis. Like the word what we were reading in Job 15, 34 and 35, he says, the congregation of the hypocrites will be barren. And the word congregation, where do you get it? It is from Adad. And the word, it is not kahal or any other word which could be as we read me'od or yesterday what we read in Psalm 68, 10 and 11, particularly the congregation dwelt therein. There it is Kea in Psalms 68, 11 or 10. And over here in uh, this chapter of Numbers, chapter 8 in verse 1, that uh, Numbers chapter 7, verses 89, that he went to meet the congregation or the tabernacle, what we find there also, it is a tent of appointment or the congregation over there being translated for us, it is me'ud. Again, the same word for us over there, kahal, in Proverbs 20, 27. And over here, when we read in Job 15, 34, it is neither kahal, it is neither me'ud, it is neither keya, but it is the word called for us edad. And edad originates from the word yad, yad again meant to say servants. From where it comes again, yad comes from the word called as Ud. So E-D-A-D, -E if you take the origin of that, it is E-D, that is Yad, that again the origin of Yad is again Yud. So Yud meant to say repeated, Yad meant to say servants, Yadad meant to say family of servants with repeating witness for the word of God. But here he says, such repeated witness of this family who are godless, no matter however generations they may come and sit in the congregations. Father, son, and grandson. He says, these are godless congregations. These are godless repeated witnesses for me as families. Therefore, they will never produce the fruit. They are always barren. So the unfolding of the truth will give you enlightenment. And that's not possible if it is not out from exegesis. Therefore, the key of origin of exegesis is most important. And until and unless you are taking that in a way that has to be making your heart to be pounded into powder or dust, as long as you fail to become dust, as long as you fail to become the word of God, it's not possible for you. Because you have to check it. Is there anything that I'm growing the powder in the sense for you to teach as Christ our Lord our God explains, Iota upon Iota and Carrera upon Carrera, I shall not let go even that dot, I shall not let go even that small tittle. The same procedure for us. 
even when we are not letting go even that small dot or a small alphabet that makes a difference between p and r as a line strike of a line even we have to cross check every facet of our thinking every facet of our soul every facet of our mind with pure consciousness therefore you know there is a word for us in second timothy chapter 2 particularly in verse 22 and 23 he says in verse number 19 be far away from the standards of this man who are not able to do the will and the work of god that is depart from iniquity those who are named and when it comes to verse 20 he says vessels of honor and dishonor in verse 21 he says purge and then he says in verse 22 flee from youthful lusts follow righteousness faith that is doctrine charity love peace with them that call on the name of the lord out of a pure heart <laughs> and this is very important catharsis the word is not hagios hagnios but it is catharsis out of a pure heart can you say you are having a pure heart or can we be in a company with those men who are walking after righteousness who are looking upon doctrine charity peace and who call upon the name the name is nothing but again onoma what we have read but over here calling is the ones who are invoking or calling in authority to the lord god and you know verse for us in revelation chapter 14 in verse number 5 i think many people may not qualify for that because they are resembling to 1 lakh 44000 jews open up your bible to revelation chapter 14 we read one verse and come back to contract He says in their mouth was found no guile or deceit the greek word is dolos which meant to say any trick or any subtlety or any vile nature or any craftiness or any guile that is to beguile by blandishments allure entice or devices today we can find such men who are full of deceits in and around right from the beginning of the pulpits but here he says this congregation in revelation 14:5 that is 1 lakh 44000 jews he talks about them so that we could learn and understand that they might be men even in the flesh to such standards they were also in the same flesh but we are far above than them because we have been given the indwelling trinity if they could be a category of those people in the future the tribulation for so many years on this earth then how much more we can't be as even elisha says i am the only one left over but god said to him in second kings 18 in first kings 18 he says to him don't worry there are yet more 7000 men who haven't bowed their knees to idol here we learn a simple lesson if lord god the father would keep such men preserved he knew everyone would be in such manner provided they walk in the power of lord god the holy spirit therefore he says be you holy as i am holy or become holy ones to jehovah because he is holy one an invitation to all who believe in christ to conform to the image of christ predestined to know what is the will of god and to be according to the full measure stature of his thinking in righteousness and in holiness putting upon the new man he knew very well what it would be he knew very well what it would cost so he says give your life sacrifice unto christ to know by the standards of your thinking because in the future tribulation there will be one like 44000 jews in whom there is no deceit he says because this words are essential for us to compare do we match in the past he said an example about enoch and he said an example for us while his earthly ministry through moses no man rose like him though there were human failures in him yet face to face with the lord 
that could be representing the entire Israelites. Christ our Lord our God who lived in his flesh, being born in the Spirit, a pattern set forth for us to ascend the seven steps and look the glory beyond that. We read that in Ezekiel 41. The same thing over here in Numbers 8, when the consecration of the Levites would come, he says, first light the seven lamps. The same thing for us over there, the sevenfold spirit operating in us as one spirit. So Christ, O Lord of our God, set forth for us when he says in Matthew 10, 17, Be wise as serpent and pure as thou. And coming to the church age, Apostle Paul says, I follow Christ, you follow me. In the tribulation, he gives an example about one like 44,000 Jews who would be in Revolution 14, 5, teaching to us this example. In him, in them, there was, no, there was found no guile. That is what 100 times saying you cannot find or the word meant to say for us to come upon or to meet upon any decide with them. And then he says, for they are without fault. The word meant to say they are amomas. No blame inward, neither outward. Because they are without blame before the throne of God. And the whole reason why we have been kept alive even after salvation is that we could fulfill these words in our entire life. That could be the summary of mankind on this earth in knowing doctrine in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. If he has learnt the word of God, if he has known the mind of Christ, if he has really understood the will of God, then quite obviously he would be the person to talk about in the standards of these words. Because he has been said long back in Leviticus 11, speaking from the propitiatory shelter, that is, the Ark of the Covenant, giving them these instructions, become holy as I am holy. And meeting those standards to find in Revelation 14.5 is an ultimate life for every believer on this earth. For that cause he says, I dwell in eternity, heaven of the heavens, because I am the high and the holy one and the lofty one he claims in Isaiah 57.15. At the same time, I also dwell among them who are, number one, contrite. And the word contrite we are reading for us, it meant to say dhaka, and that is to crush or make yourselves powder or powder into pieces. And then the word humble, the word humble is nothing but shafel, which meant to say for us in the standards of becoming complete obedience to the word and to the will of God as we look upon in Luke 1, two examples. Zacharias claimed what it might be a witness, and his mouth was shut. When Mary was visited by the Lord, the angel of the Lord, Gabriel, there we read, she humbly obeyed, thy, I am thine handmaid, and therefore she has been called as blessed. Who would accept an awkward condition like that, like the way how Job also accepted? The conditions, though he might have trying to claim his self-righteous standards that taught, taught him a lesson and given him to know the importance there is not a man like him. And over here for Mary we find blessed is the woman of all because she simply and humbly accepted. She said, Behold, I am thy handmaid. That's a humble character. Today as well, he said for us in John fifteen fourteen. You are my friends, if ever you do whatsoever I command you to perform. That is to make it to an independent existence of its own. For uh oh, whatsoever I have mandated you, he has mandated us to conform to the image of Christ. He has mandated us to carry your cross every day and follow my Christ and become his disciple. He has mandated us to join as disciple in the church and go on to grow up as Grammatias. He has mandated us to go and make disciples of all the nations. And can we be humble like Mary or Job? And not to raise questions like, 
Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist. And though we find for us in Luke 7, 28 and 29, teaching to us there could be not a one greater than John the Baptist, but the one who has been born least in this kingdom, that is the church age. They are far greater than John the Baptist because to us they have been given the unfathomable riches of Christ, Ephesians 3, to be revealed and taught for you. And every believer is eligible for that to be learned. In the past, even the prophets, even the great men, even the righteous men wanted to look what we are enjoying. Even apost even the standards, what Moses looked upon to say, I wish the entire camp to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And that has been fulfilled for us in the church age. Every knucklehead who believes in Christ, they have been indwelled by the Holy Spirit because they have been given that Christ our Lord our God has come not to condemn the world but to save the world. And in understanding to save the world, he is giving them a chance to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Therefore, they have been said to be the laborers are few, but the harvest is plenty. The word laborers are nothing but the men who are capable of teaching. And every believer being an ambassador to my Christ is capable of teaching provided he walks becoming wise by redeeming the time and not becoming slumbers like the world. And therefore we have been sent not to condemn but we have been sent to save how when you become a teacher when you become a laborer when you become to realize that the harvest is plenty and the laborers are few. And what we are doing today, we are, need, we, are not, we are not even contrite first. If you are contrite, then you will become humble, dear brother. When you are making yourself crossed into pieces, when you are making yourself to realize that the word of Lord God should work in me, when you realize that the mind of Christ should be number one for me, Every neuron in your cell that is carrying in your brain, every red blood cell that is carrying oxygen to your body, they should be contained with the powder of the word of God. You should crush it out and you should look, is there anything that is against the will of God? That's why we find a great chapter for us in Genesis 22 teaching to us. Abraham passed the examination when he was being called for the test. And now he says, there is nothing that could you stop between you and me or make a barrier between you and me to serve me. Because you have given your own son. And now I know with all of your heart you love me. Because of you the nations have been blessed. And he's called as a father of faith for us, an example for us to walk. And we likewise should examine our every facet of the cell in our brain and every facet of our cell, in our red blood corpuscle to understand. Is there anything that is against the word of God and the will of God and the mind of Christ? We have to beat it down into such contrite nature first. Then automatically comes the humble heart. So that you could become as holy as our Lord of our God demands. And Lord our God says, be wise as serpents, do not let go the time, redeem the time. And the word redeem for us in the Greek over there is to purchase the time. How can we purchase? Therefore in the church age you have been given to match those 1,44,000 Jews. So that there was no guile in them, no nature of deceit in them. Neither they have been found any guilty before the presence of the Lord, because they were Amomas. You also should meet the standards, he said. Therefore, you have been indwelt by the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and then Christ Jesus, our Lord, and then God the Father, the Gospels, John 13 through 17. And when you have been indwelt, you have to realize that we need to beat into powder everything, everything. If the scripture says, love your enemies, it is our privilege to prove now. <laughs> you know, when Job was called for examination, he said, it's a higher opportunity for me to prove that the glory of Lord God and his 
attributes reign forever and even for a witness. And that's what we have been made. We have been called to be a witness for the truth. We are called to be a witness for the glory of Jehovah. That we belong to Jehovah and not to the world, not to cosmos thinking, neither to Satan. That's what we look, that's what we read, that's what we learn, that's what we make up our mind. Call to be witness, call to be witness, Isaiah 43, 10. You are the people that you have to witness, Isaiah 42, 9 and 10. How many times he calls that you are my witnesses. Even in John 18, 38, the very purpose why I have been born, he said, Christ Jesus, our Lord, to witness the truth and why you are born in Christ. If you are not witnessing the truth, then you are not following the steps of my Christ, what he said, follow me. witness the truth and the greater we witness not the truth in this world the greater our life has no meaning therefore we learn saying that you have been given Lord God the Holy Spirit for a purpose to realize that you should confirm to his image confirm to his glory and therefore, however it is possible, he says, there is a procedure for you. How every day go to church, learn the word of God from the bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teacher whom I have pamper. If not, we cannot handle the word of God. If we don't, if we don't have this bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, how we could handle and explain the attributes of God? Because we are dealing with epinosis. We are not dealing with the gnosis of this world. The gnosis of this world, they may be expert in engineering, they may be expert in their medical science, they may be expert in their aeronautical science or whatever way they may be. They are gnosis knowledge. But Lord God, the Holy Spirit has given everyone the indwelling ministry so that they could come back, not just gnosis, but epinosis knowledge, which is nothing but the supernatural things of Christ, what we find in exegesis in the word of God. So therefore, every believer has been entitled to learn full and complete coherent knowledge of God in the Epinosis Word through daily intake of Bible doctrine and look upon his conduct to flee from them who are not honoring the word of God, but rather serve the Lord our God with a catharsis heart, clenched heart. A clenched heart is the one who is humble enough to do the will of God who doesn't look and wait. You know, how you could be true to yourself. Being true to the word of God, you can be true to yourself. Speaking what is right and correct. Doing that which has been demanded by the Bible. When you're true for that, you will be true to your own heart and your consciousness. Having something what the Bible says and doing something or practicing something which is not at all in the Bible is not true. Therefore, he says for us in, Pro, in 2 Timothy, while he's writing his dying declaration in those passages, he says, Those who worship Lord God, who follow righteousness, who follow charity, who follow peace, charity is nothing but agape, peace is nothing but again irony, faith is nothing but doctrine, and who call upon the name of the Lord of a God with a pure heart. First, it has to be contrite spirit, contrite in nature, beating it to dust. Second, it has to be humble enough, and you're humble enough, then you will have pure heart, heart that has been cleansed, a heart and consciousness to teach and to tell. We have met the standards of the Lord, so even you follow, as Apostle Paul said. And he says a word for us in Colossians 4 when he teaches, mark them that they are walking according to this rule and practice it. That means to say what? There will be men in the church age as well. When Elisha couldn't know, he thought he was the only one, but yet there were 7,000 men who have been reserved. In the same way in the church age, like Apostle Paul, there will be men who might have walked not in the sense of celibacy, not in the sense of not getting married, but in the sense of serving Lord God, giving their lives. And there will be very great men who will be evaluated at the judgment seat of Christ for this church age. And they will be the people to be quoting the standards of Revolution 14.5. 
because they are pounding themselves to powder every time they take in the word of God. Is there anything that is not matching the word of God according to this verse so that they could cleanse it and humbly they would accept it like the maid of Mary, the mother of Christ, the human nature. And then become a clean heart. And God the Father says, I reside with them. Not with the people who have grown fat by rejecting the word of God. Therefore, we look that in Deuteronomy 32 to the pain of our heart. It is I who has bought them. He teaches them again. It is I who have made them everything for the will of God again. But what they have done, it is what he says, I have caused you to mount upon the high places of the high places. It is I who have taught you this thing. As an eagle which goes upon like the way I have taken you, he says in verse 11 and then in verse 12 of Deuteronomy 32 he says Lord alone did lead him and there was no strange God with them there was no foreigner there was no alien and every man should wake up Jehovah is a gift of revolution given for us in the word of God and with the word of God in exegesis alone you can live a life of Kaya as we read it mentioned because this life of Kaya is related purely to the word of God you have some trouble, you go to a hospital, the people will come and give you the reports according to those standards. Because they are the people not according to the word of God. They are the people according to rationalism and empiricism. But you say, till I could finish my Lord's work, I have to be alert and I have to do the will of God. That's what it is, the word tetelestai, when he finished the work he was being given. The same thing with for us when he teaches in Job. God the Father knows when is the right time to pluck off the ripe fruit. So he knows, but till that what the work of the Lord God has to be done for that cause, no matter what, he keeps us alive. And you go to a doctor and you fear the things of the world and you follow them. It meant to say you're following the things called as foreign ones, the things that are no other gods you're following. But you're not following the counsel of Jehovah when he said, do my things and you live. As we read yesterday, again in Psalms 92, verses 13, 14, and 15, what do the, uh, the righteous ones who are doing the will of God, they do? They become old and they're still alive to flourish the fatness of the glory of God. So here we find the very reason why he gives us this life is that we have to honor the word of God in everything, not only in the standards of the details of life, but also to see that if the world comes and says such and such is true, this is true, this is true, but you have to say the word of God is true. The same thing what Thomas Kempis writes in his book of the imitation of Christ. Don't give me anything in this world, not even doctors, just give me the word of God. That's true because he knows very well. The men who haven't learnt and feared the word of God, the reason is purely they have deviated and they have been encouraging the old sin nature to get acquainted or to get satisfied to this world. But the thing what the word of God says is, repent, come back, confess and do the will of God because sin and sickness goes hand in hand. And the world is happy for such sickness to be continued in them still. Therefore, they get the good Nobel Prizes for inventing some medicines. That is Gnosis again. For a temporary relief, for the climatic conditions, for the things that have been polluted. If a man could walk according to the principles of Bible, he would knew the true relationship establishes purely by the word of God. And man's entirety is depending upon the word of God. And he knows that. Therefore, we find the word, it is he alone who led you out and there is no other strange God. The other strange gods will lead you to look rationalism and empiricism, but the word of Lord God alone has a beginning in Genesis as well. In the clear chapters of Genesis, it says, To live you shall live. What a word it is for us. To eat you shall eat, he said. To live you shall live, he said. To eat is what? First Bible doctrine, and then you will eat the physical food to survive. The same thing in Matthew 4.4, 4, Luke 4.4, 4, Deuteronomy 8.3. The same passages again, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out from the mouth of my Lord. The same standards what we learn again and again. But the man has totally changed. Living a true clear life, clean heart life, a life of contrite and humble spirit. 
It's a premium for us in this life that we enjoy besides the details of life. We haven't met to look upon the high places of the high places being mentioned in Deuteronomy 30 to 13 to understand that we are something far above to be called as gods to these people. As John 35, 10, 10, 35 goes on to teach, the scriptures cannot be broken. To whom the word of God came, he said, you are gods to these people. That is, you have been placed something high upon the high. And these people, they are not even having something to think because they are blinded. First of all, they are not born again. We are talking to the people who are spiritually dead if he is not a believer in Christ. And since they are not being born again, we cannot expect anything from them as solutions for us. It is what we have to give them, becoming the light and salt of the earth, Philippians 2.15, shining forth by holding the grace of word of God as light luminaries in the midst of this powers and crooked nation generations. So we need to work as we have been called. We have been stated to be something far above. to be something great, to be something unique. As the world may not understand it, but we have to look. We are the light and salt of the earth. Therefore, he says, do not waste your time. Be wise, be wise. How you would be wise, he says, in Colossians and Ephesians as well. Redeem the time. Because in Philippians 4, he says, O curious Agos, let your moderation be made known to all men, or your way of life be made known to all men. Because Lord is near. And therefore, you rejoice in the Lord always have when you're having to follow the truth, when you're having in you a contrite, powdered one, when you have in you a humble nature, when you have in the standards of clean heart, then you can rejoice in the Lord. Don't you know even the minute, unclean things mentioned for us in the time of this Torah? He says, even if you eat that you are defiled. Even if you touch that you are defiled. Even if you go there that the thing which has been touched, that water, if you drink, you are defiled. Wash your clothes, be clean until evening. Why? Because we are dealing with such a holy one of Lord God who resides in the holy of the holies. And he says, I reside in my heavenly abode and also with them who are contrite and who are humble and who are calling upon me in a pure heart. Then how much more pure we have to be. Our momas in and out to produce, to produce the witness of Revelation 4 and 5 in our lives. To look and understand the things, what is so clearly mentioned for us. No inward blemish, no outward blemish. We have to be absolutely clean and clear. And we have to be no way any decide in the presence of the Lord. Because he knows in and out. Because it is the one who knows very well about us what we would be if we would have been still kept alive. He knows your end from beginning. He knows what you are. He knows how you smell in your thoughts, not having the fear of God. He knows very well what we are. There is nothing that could be hid. There is nothing that could be in the sense what you can understand. So that you can think this is good, this is correct, this is great. Everything he knows better for us to become contrite, better for us to become humble, better for us to realize and understand, to taste and see that the Lord God is good by becoming a pure, clean heart. When David made a sense of failure, he says, Lord, into thy hands I fall, judge me. When David sinned, he said, it is against thee only, O Lord, I have sinned. It is better for us to fall into the hands of the living Lord of our God who would judge us according to his grace, according to his cassette, according to his mercy. Because he wants none to perish. That's his grace for us. That's his will for us. He doesn't want anyone to die, but he wants everyone to be saved. That's the reason the promise given in Genesis 22, 18. All the nations shall be blessed because of one man's obedience. And the church to whom this power has been given to be indwelled by the sevenfold spirit of one spirit. If the church do not obey the word of God and the voice of God and the work of God, 
how would you would make your surrounding man your geographical location or the areas which you come along in touch to be saved on behalf of you they could be saved where is your obedience to give them the gospel where is your obedience to do the will of god where is your obedience what the demands of the bible are you know how we are turning out we are turning out the same crowd of isaiah and in the time of israel as he said in Deuteronomy 32, while he's writing his song as a witness, he says, Butter of kine and milk of sheep, with fat of lambs and rams of the bread of bashan and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of wheat, and you did drink the pure blood of grape. But Jeshurun, that is called as again Jerusalem, what it done, the Israel, waxed fat and kicked. You are waxen fat, you are grown thick, you are covered with fatness. Then he forsook God, which made him, and he lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods and abominations, provoked they him to anger. Taking the grace of Lord God, using the grace of Lord God, if it is not by the grace of Lord God, you wouldn't have been alive today, dear brother, and make a point on that. As we read in First Samuel chapter 5, Dagon and Ashdod people, they realize slowly, they are counting on what is happening to them. The first thing, the Dagon fell off, they couldn't stand to be before the Ark of the Covenant because there could be none. That's a very simple answer. The second time again they kept, it chopped off into pieces. Only the stem was left over. Our time is now to chop off even that stem. And then they thought they will not even enter into the temple, they left it off because no one can stand before the cargo of the covenant. And then they thought, why such kind of troubles for us, sicknesses? And they're coming back to their senses, it is because of the Ark of the Covenant. At least these people, they are aware why such things are happening to them. But we are taking the grace of Lord God, called to be the temple of the living Lord as the Holy of the Holies, because Ephesians 2.20 teaches to us, you are called to be built upon the most high holy place, the Naon temple, not Hiram. And you are taking the grace of Lord God, you have been fed with the great fatness of Lord God, and what are you doing? You are going out to sacrifice unto devils. That's what he says. He writes for us in verse number 17, They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods, that they came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. <laughs> what a word it is for us to look. Your fathers were not horrified about them. They never were worried. Rationalism and empiricism of this world. They feared only the rock of salvation. They knew who is this true Lord. They knew what is the work with the true Lord and they continued with that process. And therefore he says, of the rock that begat thee, you, you are unmindful. The same procedure for us today. Why we are not contrite, why we are not humble, why we are not of a clean heart, we are not mindful, that's why. He says, you are not mindful, that is, of the rock which begat thee or given you birth, you are unmindful and a forgotten God that formed thee. The one again for us to understand, Yashir. And when the Lord saw it, he abode, then because of the proving, provoking of his sons and of his daughters. Again we find, he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very forward generation children in whom there is no faith or faithfulness in them is not found they have moved me to jealousy with that which is not god they have provoked me to anger with their vanities and i will move them to jealousy with those things which are not a people that is what we the church i will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation that is what again the church for a fire is kindled in my anger and shall burn and then he says unto the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with her incense and set on fire the foundation of the mountains. I will heap mischiefs upon them. I will spend my arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. 
as we find a passage for us in Amos which says, If you have escaped the beast, and if you have come into your home and you are washing your hands and legs, serpent between the wall while you are washing will bite you off. The same thing over here, the beast and the serpent. The sword without and terror within, that is first outside, the sword inside by the beasts and his animals and the serpents. Shall destroy both the young, and the young man and the virgin, the suckling also with the man of grey hairs, everyone. Because he doesn't want you if you are not contrite, if you are not humble. He doesn't want you. But yet it is the grace of God for the prayer of Christ Jesus of the Lord of God to find you to be capable of becoming a true witness for my Christ. A tabernacle or a place to be indwelled by the Holy of the Holy, Trinity One. I said I would scatter them into corners, I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. So far they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding in them, though that they were wise that they would understand and consider the later end. That how could one chase, how should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight except the rock had sold them, and the Lord had shut them up? But the rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. Therefore, for their wine is the wine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah, their grapes are the grapes of Gal, their clusters are bitter. These verses are very, very important. Because the rock is not our rock. You cannot compare him to that. And he says, if they would be afraid and for the wrath of the enemy, and they should not think the enemies that they have been behaving strangely against them, again for them he shows the vengeance to pay it back. We find those chapters in Ezekiel as well as in Jeremy upon every nation. And coming back to verse 33, their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel women of asps. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? When you don't find the grace of Lord God is going to store against you such wrath of God. Be careful. So to me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their food shall slide in due time for the day of the calamity is at hand and the things that shall come upon them make haste. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he seeth that the power is gone and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, Where are gods, their rocks, in whom they trusted? Where are their gods, their rock, in whom they trusted? Which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings? Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. Therefore we find, see now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and I say, I live forever. I wet my glittering sword and my hand take hold on judgment. I will render vengeance to my enemies and I will reward them that hate me. I will make my arrows drunk with blood and my sword shall devour flesh. And that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. And he says, Rejoice, O you nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries, and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. And Moses came and spake all the words of this song in the ears, because it is a witness. The ears of the people, he and Joshua, the son of Nun. And then we find... And Moses made an end of speaking all the words to the Israel. And he said unto them, Set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which you shall command your children to observe to do all the words of this law. What you can teach to your children if you are not observing it? What you can tell to your children if you are not a contrite, humble, clean heart person in the word of God? What you haven't done, you cannot tell to others. The way how the medicine, what you haven't taken and worked in it, you cannot tell to others the effect of that medicine. The failure from parents to the children over here. And you're not able to realize how much of your life and time you're losing out. 
And then he says, it is not a vain thing for you because it is your life. Again, the word for us, Kaya, what we read. And the congregation of such life or alive man in the word of God alone will dwell on this earth. If not, like wicked, you will perish. Wicked men won't stand before the word of God. Though they may be living, but they're dead. And how many of the things we have yet to harvest in this church age? Depending upon the standards of these people, counted to be wicked in the sight of God. And yet, furthermore, dear brethren, we read, It is not a vain thing for you, because it is your life. And through this thing, you shall prolong your days in the land, wherever you go over Jordan to possess it. And the Lord spake unto Moses that self same day, the same day, saying, Get thee up into this mountain, Abraham, unto the Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, that is over against Jericho, and behold the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel for a possession. And I in the mount whither you go up, and be gathered unto the people as Aaron the brother died in Mount Hor, and was gathered unto his people. Because you trespassed against me among the children of Israel at the waters of Meribah Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin, because you sanctified me not in the midst of the children of Israel, the word sanctified, that is what you haven't made my name Kadosh hollow. Yet you shall see the land therefore before, but you shall not go there unto the land which I give the children of Israel. The two things for us to learn over there. Number one, the reason that he doesn't want to defile his servant with whom he was face to face. And number two, the reason is he hasn't honored the word of God. The same thing even we look over dear brethren. If it have entered over there, you wanted the teachings of word of God to be established. And at the generations to come, we look in the life of Joshua, how they departed churches. We learn how they have been now ruined. And the time of the kings and the prophets who came along to warn them, we find their lives being absolutely shattered off. And why these ensembles are given for you? So that we could not walk in the same path, but wake up and come back to the reality of the word of God and do the mind of Christ to the highest. And such things are a witness for us. If this is an Israelite example, we have an example for us in the church through Paul. We have an example for us in the book of Revelation, the tribulation time, chapter 14, verse 5, unlike 44,000 years. No guile, neither any fault before God. That is, no daka, or the word for us, no guilt or no decide nature, and no way any amomas, no fault within or without. And therefore he says, you become holy ones for what I have called you to be holy. What the word of Lord God teaches to us, how profound are his thoughts, how great and vast are his teachings. He has revealed for us the things that have been needed through the Bible long back in ex-GMI standards. But foolish and brutish men will never consider these things. Therefore, there have become many nominal Christians, conventional Christians, Christians who do not even fear for the word of God. They would rather fear the rules and regulations and the doctrinals and tenets of the church rather than fearing the word of God. They don't find their Lord God to be the greatest salvation to deliver them from every mannerism of problems they would get. They don't find such solution with Christ. Therefore, the reason is they don't please my Lord. Psalms 40 verse 13. Though they are enemies like you as you have hairs upon your head. Or as the way the Levites were called in Leviticus 8 to shave off. In Numbers 8, not Leviticus 8, in Numbers 8. To shave off every hair upon their body and they cleanse. Though you may have so many troubles. You please Jehovah our Lord our God He's going to give you. The deliverance only thing he wants your rats on approval that you're pleased him have only when you're contrite humble and the word for us over here pure heart 
So coming back to Isaiah 57, he teaches in verse 15 that that who is contrite, humble, and then he uses the word ruach, spirit, to revive, that is again to make them alive, kea, what we read, the congregation that dwelt therein of Psalms 68.10 is the same word kea, that is to have life and to become prosper, to make them once again alive, of the spirit of the humble, that is what, being lowly enough, like the way have Mary was to Christ will and to revive the heart first he revives the spirit of the humble because they should be always alive to the word of God and he revives that is once again makes their heart that is what heart and the spirit the immaterial part and the part of the inner one that is first your inner man the human spirit which has been given to you at the moment of salvation by faith alone in christ alone and then that human spirit should be strengthening your heart the inner man the lake so the first thing your spirit because of humbleness because of completely obeyed in christ you receive this human spirit and your heart because you are now there to make up your heart to be examined because heart is deceitful above all we read that in jeremiah 7 17 and it is a most crooked thing, one. It is desperately wicked and sick. So he uses first the spirit of the humble to revive. That is what being born again in Christ to get this. And then he says to revive once again to make the heart, heart, heart. That is what it is, circulation of your blood, circulation of doctrine to your entire parts. Of the contrite ones. The two things why he wants you to be contrite, why he wants you to be humble. And why he wants you to carry this work of a clean heart is that he wants to revive he wants to make you kaya the life revive in the sense kaya what we read so that we could be in the congregation of the alive ones and yet dear brethren like Deuteronomy 32 passage what we read we are becoming fat in our day-to-day -day thinking in the cultish activities of this life but as far as the word of Lord God has come, we haven't met the standards of his will. We are sacrificing unto devils. We are making up our lives to talk useless, worthless things, using up our mouth not to open a bit in wisdom, becoming wise. But as Satan beguiled Eve, so you have been beguiled, which is the simplicity that has to be in Christ, as he writes in Second Corinthians for them. Lest I fear, any means Satan is able to take you out from the simplicity or haplessness, which is called a singleness of mind, haplotes in the Greek. That is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. No duplicity, he says. Haplessness meant to say no duplicity. What Christ, our Lord, our God, set for us, that is it. He hasn't given no duplicity. So he says that simplicity which is in Christ, that's, that singleness which is in Christ, I fear by any means Satan should beguile you and fall for temptations. Therefore, he says, in Malais be children, but in understanding the word of God, be grown up wise men. And being always abounding in the work of God, let's do the mind of Christ. By a contrite one, by becoming a humble one, with a clean and a pure heart for the will of God. And yet, dear brethren, we know very well where we stand. Today also there is a time for you to come up. As long as your breath in your nostrils you have, there is a time for you to rebound. With Lord God the Father, He hasn't come you to condemn, but He has come you to save. So that we could walk in spirit in the will of God and not like man. As becoming the holy ones for His glory. And yet you don't believe these things, Lord God help you. If you don't listen to these things, may God have favor for you at the judgment seat of Christ. But we all need to stand and answer back for the grace bestowed upon us. For each and everything, have we pounded it into pieces or not, or powdered it or not? Or have we been humble enough like Mary who said, Behold the Lord, I am thy hindmaid. Let thy will be done. Or like a clean heart which we say when we are doing the will of God, meeting his standards, having a fellowship of company with such men. 
becoming the vessels of honor to the word of God, being free from the traps of Satan who have taken by their own will, he writes again in 2 Timothy 2, 24-26. And to pull them back again, it is the will of God by rightly dividing the word of truth and teaching them the fear of God. Dear brethren, think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our headboard and eyes closed, the closing movements being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to link to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour. That's the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us for very simple. Believing Christ, we shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest matter is to carry so thorn lagan. Herald the word in season or out of season, because the Dharma to my witnesses where you have been called. The number one Dharma from my witnesses in willing trinity followed the Bible in our hands, and number two Dharma from my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, and not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be your witnesses, and what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is for us to have fellowship with you through the word. Understanding the great purpose of calling us, that you also dwell with those people who are contrite, humble, and clean heart. Bill section, Father, to revive our hearts of the Spirit, and to make us to become contrite enough to the Word. Help us, O Lord, to completely become ourselves in the standards of humble ones, and to accept thy Word and do thy will, as Abraham did, as Moses did. Though it not honor you, O Lord, I have shown him the path for him to understand what was a failure in their life. Help us also, Lord, not to become as failures, but to be in the Word, to constantly reign in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and do that which is demanded by you in making disciples of all the nations. But first, joining as disciples and growing up as Kramatiyas. Do this extent, Father, you know very well, because you are the one who that reigneth forever and forever, and there is no power that is against thee that could stand. Help us, Father, to walk according to thee, according to the word, in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in the power of spirit which you have given to us, and the power of work and love which you have given to us, in the power of proper understanding of a sound man what you have given to us, so that we could put back to this world the senses what they have lost, and teach them thy will. And help us, O Lord, to do it faithfully as long as we have breath in our nostrils. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father. Help us to become as holy ones as you demanded, as you are holy. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father. May Lord God the whole spirit and let challenge us by these words. Amen.